Today I'm going to be test engraving some recycled materials on the Sculptfun iCube laser engraver. So let's see what this little engraver can do. So if you're new to laser engraving, as I am, I can only share a little bit of what I know about this laser engraver. It's a diode laser and Sculptfun was kind enough to send me this engraver to review. So while this isn't a fully sponsored video, they did send me the engraver for free to review and keep. Having said that, I am a complete newbie to laser engraving, so there is a ton of stuff that I don't know. But they did send me the 10 watt iCube, which from my research is the biggest or heftiest iCube. There is a 5 watt and a 3 watt, I think. But from everything I've learned about that, the main difference between the wattage is wattages is. Yeah, anyway, that it's just a fat, the more watts you have, the faster the engraver will engrave. And from the test runs that I've run on designs, they're not super complicated, but they take around 12 to 15 minutes for one pass for most of the designs that I've played around with. So it's not, it's still not a super fast process. Um, but like I said, there's a ton of things I don't know about this engraver yet. So before I get started, I did want to talk a little bit about what I'm not going to do in this video. And that is, I'm not going to show you how to set up the machine. There are a lot of video tutorials out on YouTube already that talk about how to set up the machine, how to connect to the software and all of that stuff. So I was able to do it. I can tell you that, you know, being a complete novice at this, I was able to unbox the machine and be engraving within just a couple of hours. So getting started is pretty simple. Now there are a lot of nuances that I still need to learn about, but as I said, it was pretty quick to get started. The other thing I want to mention is that SculptFun has software that you can use with this machine, and that's what I'm using. A lot of people seem to like uh, Light Burn, which is a software that's compatible with a lot of different lasers, but it is an additional cost. And since I'm just starting out and playing around with this and kind of seeing what it can do, um, I am just using the Sculpt Fun software. So I'll show you the screens and the settings that I used during my testing, but just be aware that there is additional software out there that if you're serious about laser engraving, you're probably going to want to invest in. So once you get your machine connected to your phone or your computer, this is the first screen that will pop up and it's pretty self-explanatory. I haven't figured out how to save files yet, but I'm assuming that if you do, you would have files in the file portion of this, uh, of this screen. If you hit enter, it will take you to the SculptFun website and the control button just allows you to move the laser head around. So if you hit that center button in the control panel, which I'll show you in just a minute, the laser will go to the top left corner of the machine as you're looking at it. And again, I don't really know. I mean, I know how to move the laser around, but I don't know how to adjust things to center them and, and when I would really want to move the laser head around. So I've always just used the laser in the home position. And then if you hit, so let me show you the control screen, I guess. That's what this looks like. And, um, they did, I will confess, they did send me the air assist portion as well, but I haven't figured out how to hook that up yet. So that is an add-on thing, but it helps with the ventilation when you are using the machine. And I will say that I did a few things in my craft room here and it was a little overpowering with the odor. So I moved the whole thing into the garage and I have a fan in there and it's much better. But I do uh, eventually want to figure out how to hook up the air assist. I don't know what the laser preview is. Exactly. I don't know why it has 1 to 10%. I do know if you push it, I think you can get the laser to point at, you know, kind of where, I don't know if it's the center. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't know yet. Uh, but that's the control panel. So going back, if you hit the creation button, you will end up in a screen that looks kind of like this. And I just chose a butterfly from the material list and 
it's you can see a screenshot of what you know they give you some different artwork to choose from but you can also um, upload from your camera or from your photo album and it looks like you have a brush that you can draw with and some different shapes that you can make but i focused mainly on just uh, engraving this butterfly because i wanted to compare my results across the board and have similar artwork to compare so once you have your artwork ready you can hit the next step and this is the next screen that comes up and these are the default settings so it defaults to gray brightness at 100 and contrast at 80 and i did play around with the brightness and contrast and i flipped to black and white on one of my samples but i really wasn't happy with the way it turned out so i decided just to keep most of my testing done with these default settings and so i left those settings as is on most of my samples. And then once you hit next step, this screen comes up. And I haven't figured out how to name my files yet and save them exactly, but, um, and I don't know how to adjust the sizing at this point, the speed I haven't really played around with because I really just wanted to see what the engraving looked like on a lot of these different samples. So the only number I really did play around with at all was the power. And I was completely guessing um, some from watching other videos, but also just because, you know, I, I would test it and then bump up the power a little bit. And then I got a little more comfortable with just guessing where to start at least. So the power level is really the only thing that I adjusted. So once you have all of your settings in, you hit upload and it'll let, prompt you through a couple of prompts and then you'll get this screen which will tell you how your engraving is progressing. So as I mentioned, I really have a lot to learn about this machine and if you are an experienced engraver and or you have the iCube and you know how to align things, feel free to comment and give me some pointers because for the rest of this video, I'm just going to share my results of the different materials that I engraved. So I know I told you I was going to show you mostly the butterfly, but I did also do this artwork that is uh, my own artwork, so I just know how it's made and that everything is very solid lines, whereas the butterfly there are some lighter portions and so it's harder for me to tell whether or not the engraving turned out as well, but a lot of it is just subjective and whether you like the way it looks. So this is the first thing that I did engrave and I did the first pass at 10% which you could hardly see. So I left this in the engraver. I didn't move it at all and I went over it a couple more times. So I'm not sure if that's why this E is not quite aligned correctly. And then I don't know if you can see this but there's also some boxed lines around here. This there's a feature on the sculpt fund and I didn't show it to you and I honestly don't even even remember what it is right now but you can kind of draw a box with the laser to help I think it's to help you align the artwork but I didn't really like it because even with the laser on very very lightly um you know you can see the markings from it so I don't I don't know how that helps you really align something if you're engraving you know in places that you don't want to engrave so um so that was this first test. And then the second test that I did was the butterfly on the reverse side here. And the first thing I want to mention is I did do it at 70% power, but there's also an adjustment on the iCube where you can raise and lower the laser head so that you're focusing the right distance from your piece. Because if you have things that have different thicknesses, you need to have the laser higher or lower. And I had I forgot to adjust the laser. So I had the laser too high on this. So it could be that at 70%, it might've been too much uh, engraving, but that's just to let you know that you can do things incorrectly and sometimes they still turn out because I think this actually looks pretty good even though it's not centered on the piece. The second thing I tested was some flattened aluminum sheets and just from a little bit of research I determined that I wanted to use 100% power on, on the aluminum 
Uh, I don't know that much about lasers, but I do, I get the concept that lighter colors kind of absorb the light, or reflect the light, excuse me, and the darker colors absorb it, and so the darker colors are going to emboss a little faster, I think is my conclusion. But if you know about lasers and you need to correct me, feel free. Um, anyway, I was fairly happy with the way that this turned out. And so I tried several other samples. Uh, this is an example of where I switched from the gray selection that I talked about to black and white. And I did it at 100% with two pass counts. So it took twice as long to engrave. And this one honestly looks not good. Um, so I was much happier with my first test. I'm not sure why, but I did try engraving at 50% also, and it's lighter, but it's definitely cleaner than this one where I switched it to black and white. And I don't know if you can see this, but this piece of aluminum is a little more yellowed on the inside, so it's a little darker, which may also be why the engraving shows up better. And then I did another one with 100% uh, and two passes switched back to the gray. And honestly, the two pass versions, in my opinion, look kind of worse. But again, here, this is a really silver piece of aluminum, and this is kind of that more yellow color. So I was a little sad that, you know, this didn't turn out great. Because um, if you know me, you know I've been doing a lot of aluminum can projects. And so I was hoping that I'd get some really fun results. Uh, anyway, so I did try this last version, just printing or engraving on the colored or printed side of the can. And it's very subtle, but it might have a place if you had the right can and the right artwork. It could be sort of an interesting over design to engrave over a, an existing print. So those were my aluminum can results. Next, I just tried a piece of chipboard on an old cracker box. And the brown colors, I will say, tend to really come out nicely. Um, this, I only did at 50%. And you can see that the outside of the wings, especially on this side, are much darker. And I don't know, there might have been just a slight curve in the cardboard. So this might, just been a, might have been a hair closer to the laser. Um, and this is what I'm talking about with the artwork here, that this is much more kind of dusty and not as dark and clean and crisp. And I don't know if that has something to do with the artwork or if it just has something to do with the settings that I have on the laser, because this isn't my artwork. But it still turns out pretty and, you know, I'm fairly happy with that result. My next test was on denim, and I'm kind of most excited about this um, this material for for the engraving actually. So I started with uh, just a 30%, which is a very subtle result. And then this is lighter denim as well. One thing I did learn in my research is that you want to make sure that your denim is, is damp. So I got the denim wet and wrung it out and then engraved it. And it just helps it from scorching and burning, I guess. So I tried another version at 40% and it turned out quite a bit better. And then I bumped it up to 50% and you can see a little bit of scorching here. So overall, I think that the 40% was the best range for this lighter denim. But I had to try it again on some darker denim. And so I did both of my pieces of artwork. And on this Create, you can see that it definitely lost the top of the letters. It didn't really come through very well. I did this at 40%. So, um, you know, you, I, I certainly don't have the settings figured out, but um, this one I did at 60%. And um, I think I had the denim a little more damper this time around and maybe you wouldn't be happy with some of the results there's not a perfect there's a little bit of darker 
engraving here where it might have scorched a little bit but um but I'm pretty excited to engrave on denim. I think I'm going to maybe start with that as far as trying to figure out the right settings for some different projects. Um, and that seems like a really fun material to use for me. Next, I just threw in a sort of mid range as far as color goes piece of light blue cardstock. And because this was sort of not a light color or a dark color. I just guessed to run it at a 60% uh, power. And again, I really got this lighter part in the middle. So I, I don't know, it could just be the way the artwork's done, but it also might've been that my paper was a little curved and a little closer to the laser where the wings are darker here. This was a fun one that I just wanted to try because I thought it would be fun to engrave an old book. Now this book has a fabric cover on it and I didn't get it wet, obviously. I guess maybe I could have wet it down a little bit, but um, I ran this at 60% power and it did, you can see where it scorched the wings a little bit here and then the entire engraving turned out kind of yellowish. But I just thought that was sort of a fun thing to test and it definitely, you can definitely see the image nice and clearly. This is just a scrap piece of wood and here's another example of how you can mess up your engravings. Uh, I had this block set in the corner, the top uh, left corner of my engraver, which is where I always start, but I forgot to put the laser in the home position to start the engraving. So it started engraving in a different spot. Uh, but from what it did engrave, uh, again, the center is lighter and the outside edge is crisper. And so it does make me think that maybe that's the artwork. The other thing that's a little weird is, I don't know if you can see this, but the engraver did this on every single thing that I engraved with this art. It did this little skip. So, um, and that is where the engraver starts engraving. So I didn't notice it on my circle uh, engraving, but I don't know if it's part of the art file or if it's just something weird that happened with the engraver at the beginning of this engraving job. So that's something I'll probably have to kind of test and keep an eye on with other pieces of artwork. I had some scrap cork and I heard that uh, from other people that were working with engravers that the cork engraves really nicely and it does. Again, the brown colors come out really nicely and I did this at 80%. Because I'm trying to test out recycled materials, I thought it would be fun to engrave on. This is just a piece of a styrofoam to-go box and because I don't know anything about engravers, if you do, you can laugh at me thoroughly if you want to, but I ran this through, I don't even know at what percentage, and I couldn't see a thing on it, so I put it back through at 100%, and you'll notice that there is no engraving whatsoever, which I'm concluding from my limited knowledge base is because the white is so light, and this is a little bit shiny too, so it's reflecting the, the laser and not engraving at all. So I thought it would be fun just to see what would happen. And so I painted some matte black paint on the styrofoam piece and then engraved it. And it's an interesting sort of fun result. I don't know exactly how you would use it, but uh, I liked the way that the engraving came out and I did that at just 40% because um, what little I've learned, you know, the darker colors do engrave at a lower percentage of power, if I said that right. <laughs> this is just another test. I wanted to kind of engrave some hard plastic. So this is the insert from a CD case. And I ran this at 50%. And the interesting thing is that, you know, Obviously, I don't really understand lasers, so maybe someone can explain them to me a little better. But this, I ran at 60%, which I showed you, and it's just sort of, you know, you can't feel the engraving, but you can definitely see a color change. 
in this engraving there's no color change but you can definitely feel a very deep impression where the letters have been carved basically carved out rather than just sort of burnt on top of if that makes sense uh, I know I'm not saying that right but it's just an in interesting observation for me and uh, again the aligning of the artwork is a big mystery to me on this machine so you can see that I did not get it lined up correctly at all and that brings us to the last sample that I tested, which is this clear CD case. So this is just clear, hard plastic. And <laughs> again, lasers are a little bit of a mystery to me because I'd seen other videos that talked about how to engrave on glass. And there were two things that they mentioned. The first was that you wanted a dark uh, black base underneath your engraving and the other thing was that you wanted to flip your image so that it would come out correctly because I put the piece in the engraver with the inside up so this is the edge of the case but the engraving actually happens on the other side so even though the laser is passing through, it's engraving the underside of a clear material. The other kind of cool thing is I didn't have a black piece of paper to put under it, so I just used a piece of my dark denim, and it engraved right through the clear plastic onto the denim, and you can see that this is pretty scorched. I used 100% power on this, and so you can see that this did turn pretty brown, but this was just a scrap piece to test the clear and so the other thing that happened is that there's sort of a foggy residue on the underside here which i presume was sort of from the smokiness of <laughs> of burning the plastic or melting the plastic anyway i'm going to try to clean that up a little bit and see what happens to the butterfly image because it appears to me that maybe um the color from this it was it, it picked up from the denim so i hope that i don't just kind of wipe out the image but i am going to try to clean off the back of this a little bit so i just have a little water on the cotton ball here and it is taking off the sort of smudged part of the or at least it looks like it is maybe it won't be when it's dry but it's also picking up some of that I don't know what it's picking up. Interesting. It is, um, it is taking off some of the color, but I, you can definitely still see the image, so that's nice. I like it. It stayed a little bit blue. It's very pretty. Anyway, those are my results. I'm sure there are plenty of other things I could test, and... I hope to be sharing more about this iCube laser engraver soon. As I learn things, again, please feel free to help me out in the comments if you have some advice, if you're familiar with lasers. I'd love to know what you think. You can check the description for a place to sign up for the Upcycled Design Lab newsletter and hit the subscribe button to join my YouTube community. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.